Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, talked about. So, remember we talked about any crystal structure we can uh, classify into one of these uh, uh, 14 Bravi lattices, right? So, they have actually seven different classes. So, we have seven different. I think everybody should understand how the symmetry changes from cubic to the most uh, asymmetric uh, tri training structure here. So, cubic has all A, B, C, C equal, alpha, beta, gamma, all 90, right? So, then one uh, length changes, so then it becomes tri training, uh, sorry, tetragonal structure. So, then if two of them are changing, so they, then it becomes orthorhombic, right? So, that's still, it's cubic, uh, I mean, it's all alpha, beta, gamma, 90, right? So, then it gets little less symmetric. In this case, one angle becomes 120. Uh, you draw like this from the bottom, you will see there's one hundred and twenty if you talk about this like this. Other than that, A B equals C is different. So when it goes to monoclinic, uh, that's even less uh, symmetry because all three are different. So one angle, not even hundred and twenty, it can be an arbitrary uh, angle. So then if you get to triclinic, nothing, right? Everything is unequal. So you can easily see, if you start from this one, if you make some kind of shearing, you can think about getting to triclinic, right? In the monoclinic, you have two angles, 90 degrees. If you can apply some kind of shear here, then all these angles can be different, right? So then it can be there are studies people do some phase transition by doing that kind of things. Yeah. This is something I think if you if I tell you what the crystal structure immediately you should know. If I say, oh this is a we can talk about the rhomboid. Yeah. So this is also trigonal, sometimes we call this a rhomboid. Well, in that case, all and uh, the lengths are equal, but the angles, so they all are equal but not equal to 90. This kind of uh, incline. So, because we are, right now we are doing some research, we are looking at phase transition from uh, orthorhombic to uh, rhomboidal. For example, black phosphorus is a very uh, interesting material. We are applying some kind of uh, intercalation and also pressure. From that we can make this orthorhombic becomes uh, the rhomboidal low right? So, this is very important to understand. If you look at different metals, so they belong to life, but if you look at, anybody knows, simple cubic is the most simplest, right? How many metals are there for simple cubic? There's only one, right? Polonium. That's the only simple cubic, but there are alloys that can be simple cubic, but the human uh, element, only what polonium is, simple cubic. Then phase center, that, that's the most common one, right? Copper, silver, gold, they all are phase center cubic. Then body center can be barium, cesium, even the alkali metals. So then if you go to uh, things like calcium, selenium, then these are hexagonal. So later you will sign, uh, uh, yeah, I'll talk about that one day. So then I think uh, you have different like uh, orthorhombic, you can have these uh, yeah. halogens and some halogens like sulfur. So then uh, chlorine is uh, sorry. Yeah, chlorine can be in the gas space. Uh, they can uh, make uh, monoclinic structures. So there are different metals what they can be. So uh, any of these crystal structures. Okay, so and also crystal shapes are also important, right? So if you look at the in a macroscopic scale, these crystals you, you have seen cubic <laughs> crystals, right? Then also you can have the octahedral or this uh, uh, tetra kind decahedron. So the different names like tetrahedral. So there are different crystal shapes. That's also something to remember. So now we let me go through quickly uh, one by one cubic crystals. That's the uh, the most uh, uh, the, the symmetric system, right? So.
So like I said, A, B, C, all equal, all these angles are uh, 90. So that is, uh, but we have this cubic crystals can be simple cubic, body centered or face centered. So also we have the names for that one, right? Simple cubic is primitive. Everybody remember primitive? Primitive means only one lattice point for unit cell. So that, that means you can only have uh, lattice points at the edges. So then the body center, we call this eye, it's like interstitial. There's one at the center, then body center like this. These are the uh, metals, typically simple cubic. So there's only polonium is the only solid element, right? So these are gases. So they can form any kind of thing. Look at those uh, uh, materials it can be. Then, uh, yeah. So then also, it's important to understand how many lattice points for a given uh, crystal structure. For simple cubic, one, right? Right there. For each one of them, uh, shared by neighboring one. So that means you have one over eight, right? So then you have eight of them, so that you get one. So again here, if you count for the, the, the body center, for the corner ones give you one, right? So, but each one is one and eight, but you have eight of them, you get one. So, but you have additional one at the center, then you have two. If you get the uh, face centered, face centered means if you take this one face, it is here, right? So this is uh, shared by the two adjacent faces, right? If I have like this one and this one, so it is shared by this one and this one. That means for a given like this, you have only half, right? So that means you have half, but how many faces you have? Six faces, six. right? Two, two, two. So that means you have six of them. So then you have, uh, you get here, uh, three of them. So then you have one coming from the corners. So that means you have plus one, four. That is this one. So then later we talk about diamond. Diamond is, is a, when you look at this one, it looks complicated, but this is nothing. Take two of these uh, uh, face centered lattices, then just we call interlacing. You just push one into the other one. So then you will see these additional ones coming here. So if that means this is nothing but having two FCC lattices. So one FCC lattice gives you four, then this one should have eight. So later, there are a lot of names people can get confused with. Diamond, we call diamond when all these elements are same. Like if they all are carbon, that's carbon diamond, right? But if they all are silicon, still it is diamond. But if you have two different elements here, like silicon carbide or something, so in that case, we call this a zinc blend structure. So same thing, if it is same element, we call this a diamond structure. If there are two different elements, we call the same thing, zinc blend structure. So please remember, these are some names people might get sometimes confused. Then tetragonal, remember everybody? Only difference is one length is different, right? So everything else is same. So you can see A, B, C, then C. Uh, uh, C is different from A, B, so then you can do all this, but still it can be all these cubic things, right? If you look at this one, like if you look at tetra, uh, this uh, tetragonal, you can have actually two different structures, one like simple cubic or one the body centered. So it's more like this one, right? But these are all the same atoms, we just pro uh, uh, colored differently to understand this one. It's very important when you do the material science or even physics, right? How these structures look when you look from different angles. Because if you look at from different angles, they look different, right? For example, if this one, if I look from top, how do you, do you see it? You see this four, then you see the middle one, right? So that's how it should look like, right? So then if you uh, have actually, I this is the case you looks like this one right so you have to see how it looks like when you look from different angles 
So the orthorhombic, remember, what is the orthorhombic? When I say orthorhombic, you have to immediately know. A, B, C all are different. So, but alpha, beta, gamma all same. 90 degrees, yeah. That, that's the difference. So. so, the C you can see here, but still these are all the same uh, metals. But if you look from different angles, so suppose if I look from uh, top, uh, sorry, from this angle, they look like this, right? You have this corner one, so then you see the middle one and red two. If you look from uh, this side, if you look from here, how does it look like? You have these four corners, then you will see this uh, middle green one, then also you will see these two also. Like this, you can see. So please uh, understand how they look when you look from the projections, right? So this is actually, we have this software, that's the best way to do. So actually there are free, like crystal, uh, what's it called? Uh, there are several free software. You can rotate the, <laughs> the crystal structure and see how it looks like. Can you create like these crystal structures? Inside this, inside the software? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you can uh, ask them to put this element in this crystal structure. So uh, maybe I can uh, uh, show you how to use yeah, that no, one. No. That could I, be useful. I always wonder why where they got these nice pictures. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This all are uh, very easy to draw from that yeah. one. Then hexagonal. Remember, hexagonal. You have two of them are equal, but the C one is different, right? But the angles, two of them are ninety degrees. Uh, say if you look at uh, this one and this one they are 90 degrees but this angle is 120 degrees so actually if you look at the unit cell of this hexagonal you can see all these like these points here actually this is your unit cell that's the smallest the cell you can translate to make this one actually this is the unit cell for this uh, hexagonal uh, structure, but you can see this angle is not 90 degrees, that's 120 degrees. You can translate that unit cell to make that entire crystal, right? So I will give, the, in the homework I ask you to calculate some properties of this hexagonal structure. So that's the, yeah. Then the rhombohedral, I said all ABCs are equal, but alpha, beta, gamma, they are equal but not 90 degrees. Here again, you can see how they look like by looking at different angles. So please look at this. Uh, monoclinic, again, very uh, less symmetry, right? So, but these two angles are 90 degrees. This can be any arbitrary angle depending on your structure. But A and B, uh, A, B, C all are unequal. That's why it's less symmetric, right? Like I said, if you can shear this one, you can make triclinic, right? <laughs> okay, so all alpha, beta, gamma. If you can make this alpha and gamma none equal to 90 degrees, then it becomes what? Triclinic, right? Yeah. Let's look at the some phase transitions. Yeah, this triclinic. Okay. So now uh, let's look at these uh, uh, different lattices when you fill with. Uh, your atoms. So, this, what is this one? That's just a lattice. Right? This name, lattice means just points, right? This, uh, but these points should be identical. They should have the identical surrounding. That's the important, right? That's how we pick the lattice. So, now if I put some uh, my basis, right? So, then I make the, my crystal. Suppose this is uh, my uh, simple cubic crystal, right? So now, ideally, if you look at the crystal, these are this way to represent your crystal, right? Ideally, if this is an atom, these atoms are really filling the, that volume, right? So you can see these at the atoms, they must be kind of uh, touching each other and uh, making that space you can see they are not perfectly uh, 
fill in that space, right? That's why we have something called the fill-in factor. So, for example, if I take uh, two-dimensional, if I take something like this, I have this space we call a void, right? So, if I take uh, actually uh, something. like this then you can have void like actually this try we call this a retrogonal kind of void right here so this I didn't draw it properly so these are called voids you can never fill the entire unit cell right so that's why we have something called the, uh, the filling factor so you, we can calculate filling factor for each crystal structure. Simple cubic, uh, body centered, face centered, hexagonal, and all kind of things. So what do you expect uh, highest filling factor? That's why something called the uh, cubic close packed structure. I'm going to talk about that one. That has highest filling factor. That's also something called the external close pack. So they have higher filling factors. You can compare when I do each one of them. So yeah, cubic point, so the same thing. So let's see in cubic structure, how do you calculate the filling factor? So if I take my unit cell, say A, 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 then what is the total volume? A cube, right? So if I take that one, so if I take only the uh, space or volume filled by the atoms. So if I put that one here, so that fraction is called the filling factor, right? Typically this one should be smaller than this one, right? So if this is one, it, it, same as this one, you are packing everything, but you cannot do unless it's a liquid, right? If you can melt your material, then it can fill. But other than that, so how do you calculate this one? Very simple, right? If you consider, because we have these four spheres, right? So that means if I take uh, this A, so this is actually, if you take this one, this is R by 2, right? Because this, like this, this is also R by 2. That means this to total thing is R, right? So that means you have R, this becomes, uh, so, is that correct? So, uh, yeah, two, two R, right? So that means this is R, this is R, that means you have two R, right? Two R should be your A. So then I can calculate your R in terms of A, that is A by two. So that means I can calculate uh, what is the, if you have A by two radius of sphere, what is the uh, volume? Volume is 4 third pi r cube. r cube means a by over 2 cube, right? So now, how many atoms are there for a simple cubic uh, unit cell? One, right? So that means this volume multiplied by only one. So that's the total volume uh, filled by that uh, sphere. So if you do this one, you can get your uh, Filling factor that would be what 4 over 3 times pi a over 2 cube divided by a cube, right? So this means you can see a cube cancel, you get 4 pi divided by you get 8 times 3, 24, right? This pi over 6 that's the filling factor, right? So, like this, you can calculate for any. Uh, structure if you take uh, BCC structure so that's the structure right this is my lattice right is this a primitive lattice no because you have two atoms but we know how to make a primitive uh, cell for this one so I will show you how to do that one primitive cell should be the smallest cell right so but this has two lattice point that means this is not a primitive this is a, what do you call this one uh, yeah, uh, body centered uh, cubic structure, but this unit cell is called conventional unit cell. Conventional means 
is not primitive. It this has two uh, lattice points per that uh, uh, unit cell, right? So that means it's not primitive. But we can find a primitive unit cell for any system. I'll show you how to do that one. So now, if I take this one, I just put uh, atom at each point. So this also uh, mono atom basis, right? At each lattice point, I put one atom. So, but in reality, these are kind of filling the space. So, but if you want to calculate the uh, total the fraction, you can easily do that one, but that calculation is little bit, so this is how it looks like, right? You have the central one, so then you have the half of each one, right? So then you can easily calculate your, this length, what is this length? This is, you have, this is 2R, right? Because this is big sphere, you have R, R, then you have another R, another R, that is, uh, this is two, three, four R, right? You have four R diagonal. Four R squared equals, if you take uh, this one squared plus this one squared, right? What is this one squared? This is A, this is A. If you use the Pythagorean theorem, this is A squared plus A squared is two A squared. So then this one is A squared, that means three A squared, right? That means four R squared equals 3a squared. It's easy to do, right? It's a simple geometry. This squared plus this squared. Is that it? Yeah. So that means you can find your r in terms of a. So this means 4r equals, if you take the square root, a square root of 3, right? So that means r is a square root of 3, uh, 3 over 4. So now, how do you calculate the uh, filling factor? Now you have to be really careful, right? In fact, again, your numerate is a cube, right? Because this is a cube. What is the this part? First, you, the, you need to find what is the volume of your one sphere. That is uh, 4 third pi r cube. r is a square root of 3 over 4 cube. That is the uh, volume of a sphere. But how many spheres are there? Two. Yeah, that means you have to multiply by you can calculate you. So this is that one, right? You know how to calculate that one. So same thing. If you go to the uh, face center again. So is this a primitive cell? No. Again, this is a conventional cell, right? This has four lattice points per unit cell. So again, if I put this my motif, one atom, you get this structure. Ideally, that is the field structure, right? If you want to calculate this one, again, that's pretty straightforward. This is how they look like, right? You have, at the center, you have this half uh, one. So now, if I want to calculate the uh, uh, one, again, we can find this one. What is this length? R, R, another R, another R, 4R, right? 4R equals, in this case, this square plus this square. Right? Because this 90 degrees. A squared plus A squared equals 4R squared. So you can easily do 4R squared equals, in this case, only 2A squared. Here we got 3A squared because of that diagonal term. So now your 4R is simply A squared root of 2. That means R is uh, A squared root of 2 over 4. Then again you do the same thing, right? A cube, this one, this square root of A, oh, yeah, this one. But here you have four of them, right? So now if you divide, you can calculate the atomic uh, packing fraction. So because they are always small, but you can see from going from uh, simple cubic to uh, face centered, your packing fraction is increasing. You can calculate those numbers. Is that clear for everybody? For the homework, I gave you how to calculate the packing fraction for the hexagonal structure. Very similar. So you can find these things in the in place. Yeah. But I want you to just do and learn. Okay, so now next thing 
I want to talk about there are this crystal. Uh, 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 any crystal structure, usually people like to call it some kind of some simple structure like rock salt structure, or sometimes they call it the diamond structure, or you can call it a, uh, this a wood side structure. So any crystal structure you just call in some generic crystal structures rock salt structure means sodium chloride structure right so that's something everybody has to know i'm sure when you learn about you have say like if you are working on something like gallium nitride they say it's a wood site uh, crystal structure or if you work on some like uh, uh, some structure that they call it as a cesium chloride structure that means this is the ideal crystal but the system you are studying that has similar structure so if you hear about that one you should know what they are talking about so let's talk about this structure then also perovskites that's another nowadays very <laughs> uh, especially for solar cells so this halide perovskites are very uh, uh, i think lot of interest right so you need to know perovskites is also nothing but it's a cubic structure but you are packing more and more atoms that's the only difference so let me talk about these things quickly so uh, if you take this rock salt structure actually it's, it's a face centered structure but you have two of these uh, uh, in the face if i take this a face uh, centered one right now we are taking not single atom basis, I am taking two atom basis. That means each uh, lattice point I am going to decorate with this two atom basis. One is sodium, one is chlorine. So if you put this one, each point, I just put here this one also. At each point I am going to put this two atom motif. If you do that one, this is how it will look like. Right? Just try to do that one here we we'll get this one here. We are talking about this is sodium, this is chlorine. So if you have this kind of structure, so it can be any material, but if the structure is like that, this ideally this FCC structure, right? FCC lattice with two atom bases. So typically we call this kind of structure as a rock salt structure or sodium chloride structure. So, if you calculate the packing fraction for that one, that's come something like that. You can show that one. So then, there's another kind of uh, structure called cesium chloride structure. So, if I ask you immediately, what is this structure? Immediately, you say body centered, right? But this is these are not the same atoms. <laughs> if they are same atoms. This is a body centered lattice, but these are two different atoms. One is cesium, one is chlorine. So that means this is a simple cubic structure. Your lattice is simple cubic. I think every class I ask this question, I think almost every time they say this is a BCC structure. <laughs> it's most probably because this color doesn't look different, right? So if I have all these atoms, say copper atoms, or no sorry, uh, say barium atom or something, so then this is a BCC structure. But if I have uh, two atom bases, cesium and chlorine, I take simple cubic lattice and each point I am putting this two atom basis. If you do that one, you will find that structure looks like this one. So there are many uh, things like magnesium, strontianite, and this copper zinc. Uh, but basically that name came from uh, cesium chloride. Please remember this kind of structure is called cesium chloride structure. This is, what is the lattice of this one? Simple cubic. <laughs> But it has two atom base. Yeah. So it's different. It's different when we talk about lattice than when we talk about the structure. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, in this case, 
Um, structure is still quite central here. No, no. So uh, this is uh, your lattice is simple QB. Then you decorate with two atom bases, one say cesium, another one chlorine. At each simple uh, uh, simple cubic lattice, you are going to put two atom bases. Then you get this cesium chloride structure. But if I take say cesium. I don't know whether you can do that one. If I can put cesium uh, onto this one, it becomes simply uh, <laughs> simple QB. But if I start with the uh, BCC lattice, if I can put only cesium, then it is BCC structure, right? But here I start with the simple hum, uh, simple QB and put two atom bases. Then it makes because this this atom and this atom is different. That's the difference here. Yeah. yeah. That, that coloring is bad. That's the only If it was red or something, you can identify that. That's why when you immediately see, you cannot immediately tell this is this crystal, right? You have to think a little bit before you. <laughs> yeah. First, you need to identify the lattice, then you have to identify the basis. That's a little tricky, actually. So then FCC we talk about that, right? So this is basically uh, uh, you take FCC lattice, then I, if I want to put just say uh, copper, then you get FCC lattice, right? The crystal. But if I put two atom bases, so it's at each FCC uh, this lattice point, I am going to put two atoms, like say carbon. So then what do you get? If you think these are more like two this inter uh, penetrated two FCC lattices. So this is, this means you can think about diamond as two simple FCC lattices interpenetrating or interlacing or just take FCC structure and put two atom bases. That's the same thing, right? That's how you get so. So later I'm going to talk about something probably chemistry, chemical engineering, I think. They like to see the crystal structure in terms of that the void space. Because how much the voids are there? This head tetrahedra, octahedra kind of thing. That's what I just <laughs> drew like that. So we'll talk about that one later. So this is diamond structure, right? But if these two atoms are different, say uh, silicon carbon, silicon carbide, so you get similar structure, right? So, but we don't call that one diamond structure. We call that one zinc blend structure. Please remember that one. Zinc blend structure. Oh, how it is over here. Structure. There are a lot of uh, things with zinc blend structure. Gallium arsenide is famous one. So that means this is a diamond structure, like me two FCC lattices, but the two atom bases. You have one. If, if you look at this one, see this is at the zero point. Then this one is more like this quarter, quarter, quarter uh, ABC distance. So you can see here. This is the zero place and this is the uh, sorry this one from every direction they are more like quarter distance apart is that clear zinc blend versus diamond diamond is when all the atoms are like uh, similar right same atom zinc blend is the same structure but those two atoms are different one is gallium other one is arsenic in diamond they all are carbon Okay, now let's talk about, uh, remember we talk about the uh, primitive vectors, right? So, uh, in terms of this A, uh, B, C, or I cannot remember what we use, A, B, C, or A1, A2, A3, I think, yeah, A1, A2, a3 right so then 
we could define any point, any lattice point in the uh, lattice in terms of a1, a2, a3. So that means if I write this one, I think we say m, n, o, I think. I could write R, n, m, n, o as some m times a1, n times a2, plus o times a3, like that. So these numbers are what? All integers. That's, this is for lattice. If you have, these are integers for lattice points. For any lattice point going from one to another one, you can have only these uh, uh, integers. Now, if I want to uh, define the coordinates for the basis, so basis is inside the unit cell, right? If I want to write uh, the coordinates for the basis, for example, these are, suppose this has four atom bases, say. So if I write this one in terms of A1, A2, A3, what do you expect these numbers? They have to be fractions, right? Because they are inside the unit cell, right? Please remember that difference. If I want to get the lattice, vector, the lattice points, then you have to have integers. But if you want to uh, write the basis, uh, the coordinate for the basis, it has to be fraction, right? Because this one is inside the, so please remember that one. So this R1, R2, R3, still I can write in terms of this one, but these three should be less than one. Right? One means it's at the surface, right? So yeah. less than or equal, but mostly they are inside. So please remember now we are going to represent basis. Uh, in, in, uh, the basis means, uh, this the your crystal this is a crystal now right so crystal means you have the lattice and the basis so now we are going to represent the basis uh, in terms of this uh, primitive vector so now if i write rj so r1 r2 r3 right so if i write this one in terms of a1 a2 i have this x these are coordinates right what are these numbers they have to be less than 1, right? so that's less than O1, 1 means right at the surface of the unit cell, otherwise it has to be inside the unit cell, please remember this has to be, it cannot be more than 1, right? if it's more than 1 means that it's not inside the, the unit cell, right? so please remember the difference between these numbers and these numbers, so these numbers we use to define the lattice points, here these numbers we define to uh, represent the, the coordinate of the basis. But basis means the atom. Is that clear for everybody? So please don't get confused. So now let's say uh, cubic uh, lattice. So now uh, we know I can write, suppose this is my uh, A1, A2. A3, so you can easily write what is A1. You are simply A times unit vector x, right? <laughs> so then A2 is this also A, A times unit vector in this direction is y. Uh, then this one A3 is so this you can easily write my the primitive unit uh, vectors like that, right? Also, we know we have only one atom basis for the. Uh, this one. So if I write the body centered one, this is what I was trying to tell you. So this is not a primitive cell, right? But if I pack these things together, I can find the primitive cell. Primitive cell means you can have only one lattice point, right? Actually, if I put these things together, now what is this volume of this one? A cube, right? So if I take these three vectors, so this is the, the, the center of that, this, the, the middle body centered atom. So this is for this one, this is this one. So then next one is here. If I take A1, A2 and A3, this one makes some 
polyhedron, right? right? You have two, three vectors. If you take that one, that's a primitive cell. This one is not a primitive cell, right? So this one has a volume of a cube. If you take these three, you can easily write in terms of a1, a2, 3, all these uh, coordinates, right? How do you write this coordinate here? This way is half, right? Half a, this way also, uh, this way also half a, this one also half a, right? This half, half, half. Uh, if you come here, what is this coordinate? This is also half, this is positive, if I, oh, no, this way it is negative, right? If this is, suppose this is positive x, this is positive y, this is positive c, then this is positive x, this is positive y, negative c, right? Negative a by 2 actually. Like that you can write all the, what is this one? This is uh, positive x a by 2, here yeah, negative, right? So this is also positive. Like that you can write all the coordinates. So if you write the coordinates, then you can take the volume. If you take that volume, actually it's smaller than a cube. Well, that's a primitive cell. This is conventional cell, right? Because this has two atoms. This cannot be a primitive cell. But if you take this polyhedra here, actually that's a primitive cell. There are ways of uh, doing that. So here, this is what I said, like A over 2, how you write A1, A2. Everything is half, 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 then depending on whether negative or positive, right? You can easily write. So if you now, oh, uh, we, I didn't talk about this one. How do you calculate the volume of uh, some uh, cell that has three perpendicular or even it doesn't have to be perpendicular. How do we calculate from these three the volume? You have to take something called the triple product, right? So if we have A1 cross A2 dot A3, right? So that's the triple product of this A1, A2, A3. So that will give you the volume of your... Uh, so in this case, what is the volume? A, A, A a cube, right? If you do this one, you can easily calculate that one, right? Take the, the vector product of this one, then take the dot product with that one. Please calculate that one. You will find this volume is, I think it's half of a cube. But that has to be smaller, right? <laughs> Please do that one. I, everybody familiar with this one? Volume is given by a one a2 dot a3 right so this vector you take the uh, the dot product with the third vector basically this is a1 1 you know how to do this uh, this uh, calculate the, the uh, determinant right how do you write this one I cannot remember is this the way we write it or? That's a different notation. This is called the triple product, right? <laughs> I ask you to do this one as example. Calculate this triple product and find that volume and compare it with the, this volume. So this has to be smaller than this one because this is the primitive uh, cell. Okay, so now face centered again. So, this is not a primitive cell, right? But if I take this one and connect to the center of each face, so this is the, this face, this atom at the center, right? You connect here, then take this face, that's the center, you connect here, then you take this center, you connect this one, now you have A1, A2, A3, right? So you can write this one in terms of a. Can you write this one? Suppose this is unit vector x, this is unit vector y, this is unit vector c. What is this point? Half of a, half of a in this direction. What is c direction? Zero. Because this is on this plane, right? So that is basically 
this I, I can write as a by 2 x plus y this is actually 0 right uh, yeah this is you don't have that's all you have because c direction 0 right I don't know if it's clear for everybody if I take this one again you can see on this direction uh, I have uh, half right no for well, this direction you have uh, half, x. half x yeah so then uh, uh, the this one is zero which one is zero uh, so because from here to here it is half uh, but in uh, this uh, one direction should be zero which one is zero yeah if I this way you have uh, yeah yeah, you think about that. Yeah, you know how to do that one. Actually, I wrote that one. Yeah, this is how it should be. One coordinate has to be zero, right? Others should be all a by two. So if I take this one, you can see uh, this is at the center. So that means this coordinate is zero here, right? Because that is in that plane. So if you take this one, this coordinate has to be zero. Yeah. So you can see. It's a center of one face, right? So you can see how to write. So now if I want to calculate the uh, volume of that primitive cell, just take the triple product of these three vectors, right? Please do this one just to see how. And obviously you can see this is your conventional unit cell, right? So this is your primitive unit cell. So definitely, I think this is one fourth of your uh, conventional cell. Please remember, primitive cell is the smallest volume. But you can always find the conventional cell. That also you can translate to make your crystal, right? But that's not the, the smallest volume. The hexagonal lattice again. So this is your unit cell. You can write A1, A2, A3. Uh, in terms of here, XYZ very easily. So, this one, uh, because we know this, these are A, 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 right? If I have, so if this is A, you know how to calculate the, these distances, right? So, because this is 60 degrees, so we know how to calculate this, this because this is A by 2, right? So then this distance you can calculate using sine 60, right? So you can easily calculate. That's why you get square root of 3 over 2. Because this angle is 60, right? So if you, this distance, if this is x, your uh, uh, sine 60 is, or oh, cosine 60, right? Cosine 60 is what? Cosine 60 is a over 2 divided by x. So that means x equals over 2 divided by cosine 60 that is cosine 60 is half right so then we calculate if I want to calculate this one that is uh, you can use a tan 60 right tan 60 is this divided by this one if you know this is a by 2 you can it is simple geometry I think everybody should know how to do these calculations if you do this one this is how you are getting your a1, a2, a3. This is a1, this is a2, this is a3. a3 is easy, right? That is c times that c. c is that one. To get this one, you need to write this one in terms of your the a. So you can see this one coming from cosine 30 or sine 60. This comes from uh, cosine 60. Just ah, okay. simple. Is that clear for everybody? Yeah. I think this is a very simple geometry that everybody should I, I gave homework to use these things here. Yeah. That's the only way to learn. So you, I can show it, but until you do it, <laughs> you don't get it. Okay, diamond structure again. So what is this? It's nothing but two FCC structures, right? You can easily write your uh, A1. Uh, so in this case actually I am writing the uh, 
the coordinates for the uh, the two uh, bases. So I can write one the coordinate for this atom and other coordinate for this atom. So what is this coordinate for this one? Zeros, right? It's all zero. So, so then what is for this one? This is actually, if you look at this one, one quarter from each side. X direction is x one quarter, y direction also one quarter, and c direction also one quarter. So that means it's all one quarter from x, y, c direction. So this is true even if I go to uh, sink blend structure. You have two, one here, another one here. Yeah, sink blend, you can try it. What is the coordinate for this one? Zero, right? This is my origin. So then for this one, it's just quarter of this uh, old A, right? Yeah, X, Y, C, yeah. Is that clear for how you find your basis vectors there? Yeah. yeah, it's typically like I said, sink carbide, sink selenide. The name came from sink selenide. That's why they call it sink brain structure. But now people, especially these gallium arsenide, silicon carbide, they are this sink brain structure. It's a diamond structure having two different elements. Silicon carbide, but has two different structures. They have cubic structure and also this hexagonal structure. That's different. The rock salt structure. Remember, we talked about rock salt. This one, FCC with two atom bases, right? <laughs> Sodium and chlorine. Then you can write your coordinates. So if I take this one as zero, zero, zero. Other one is this uh, quarter one, right? So in given direction. That is quad pro your expedition. So then how about cesium chloride structure? This one can you tell me the uh, coordinates? This one is zero zero zero. How about this one? Half half half, right? Yeah, because right at the center. So that means you have zero zero zero, then half 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 A. Exactly at the middle, right? So we have, yeah. Because this is a crystal is really simple cubic, right? But you put these two atom bases into that one. Is that clear for everyone? Yeah. Okay, so hexagonal close back structure. So in this one, you can see. Uh, so all these uh, same atoms, if you consider this one, so how many atoms are there for the uh, unit cell? If you consider this uh, conventional unit cell, it's not the, the primitive unit cell. Actually it has six atoms. So how do you calculate six atoms? So the, all these things will contribute to one, right? Because they all attach. So these also contribute to one atom, that means you have one from top, one from top, and one from bottom. So then these ones, this is shared with another surface, right? That means half, right? Because this atom and another, because this is half, this is half. That means you have two halves, right? You have two halves. Then at the, the middle one actually have three atoms. So this middle layer has three atoms. So then how many you have all together? One, one, one plus three. That means six, six atoms per unit cell. So this is a conventional unit cell, you have six atoms. But you can make your primitive unit cell this way. That has smaller volume, right? If you do that one, you have only one at this point. So then you can write your uh, the, uh, the 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 basis uh, vectors. If I uh, take one as zero, 
So suppose this is my zero. So then you will find, suppose this is my zero one. So then other one is this one. So what is the, the uh, unit of that one? In C direction is half. Right? So in other direction, actually, in one direction is one third, in the other direction is two thirds. <laughs> so if you look at that one, you will clearly see. But in the C direction, is exactly at the half. So that's why you have one half in the C direction, one third in uh, this direction, two third in this direction. That you have to think a little bit here. So actually, gallium nitride is a so actually when you talk about gallium nitride, you don't call it a hexagonal structure, we call it a wood side structure. If it is the same material like zinc oxide, gallium nitride, calcium selenide, these are all we call wood side. So this is a hexagonal but with different atoms, that's the difference. So like diamond we call diamond when they are in the same <laughs> material, but if you are different, we call it a zinc plane, like that. Hexagonal structure, when you have different metals, we call it a wood side structure. I think a lot of interest people are working actually in chemical engineering. We do a lot of work on <laughs> zinc oxide, cadmium, uh, uh, gallium nitrides. So please remember those are wood side structures. Okay, next we are going to talk about this something called the close packed structures because like I said the simple cubic uh, face centered or uh, uh, body centered they are not the uh, with the highest packing fraction so there are structures actually there are two structures we call close packed structures but this cross pack can be two different ways. Something uh, one called the CCP structure. That means cubic uh, cross pack. So other one is called the hexagonal cross pack. So these are the two things you, you have to uh, understand how this. Uh, this is how the hexagonal cross pack structure looks like. This is how the uh, cubic cross pack. Actually, the face centered means actually it's a uh, cubic cross pack. I will show how this one works. If you look at this one, it's a little complicated, right? <laughs> so, but if you look this way, so let's start something like this. If I take uh, some balls, if I put it in on the surface, right, like this, say A. So, if I take second one, there's only one way I can do that, right? I can only put it on these spaces, right? There's no any other place to do that one. But if you go to the next one, so yeah, this is the first layer. No, just think about this one. This is my first layer on the surface. Don't think about these are like layers. This is my surface layer. So if I take this one, if I put it here, only way I can put second layer is where? Only I can put at these places, right? That's the only place I can do. So, but if I do that second one, suppose this is A, this is B, now I have a choice whether to put it at these places or put it at these places, right? You can have different, uh, you have option to do that one. But the first one, only one way to do it, right? So that's why I think if I take uh, this A, so suppose so the, uh, if I call this uh, C, right? So if I put uh, this uh, because you can only put it in uh, wherever these things. Now, if I want to put this third layer, you can put exactly at these positions where they were, right? So on top of this one, or other position, we that's like this C position. I don't know whether this is clear to you. We call these are A's. Can you see this void places we call C. So when you put on this one, we call this a B. 
right? So now, if I put the third layer on top of these, C, right? So that means I have A, B, C. So that means I can have A, B, C uh, like this. Then you can repeat that one. Then again you can start A, B, C, A, B, C like that. The, these are called A, B, C. I don't know whether you understand what I am trying to say. A, B, C, then continue that one A, B, C, A, B, C like that. So if you do this one, if you look at here, actually they look like this one, this structure. You can see A, B, C, then <laughs> A, B, C like that. So this is, this is called uh, this uh, cubic close pack structure. So this is, if you look this one, this is more like face centered structure. So but you can also think about doing A, B after that second one, if I put A and B, so then I can put uh, where this A was, where was A? It's here, right? Underneath here A, I can put the third one on top of that A. That means I have what? A, B, A, B, A, B, right? A, B, A, B structure. There's a difference. So sometimes we call it the ABC structure or we call it ABAB structure. So ABC structure makes cubic close pack. This is more like a FCC structure. If you do this one, this is hexagonal close pack. You have to just think a little bit. Yeah. I think I asked you about this last semester. What's that? That's Bernal. Yeah, yeah, so no, the Bernal is a, 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 B is the Bernal structure. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. What about the space uh, in the SCC structure? Like what? The space within the C and B layer. Yeah, yeah so, this yeah, space. yeah, this is exactly, it was like, if I put A, th these are the A, so then B is, already you have this one, then the C is uh, not where this initial, the, the, can you see that initially your A was here, right? Yes. Underneath. Now, but we are not putting there, we are putting at the other place, C. So if I put here, that is exactly where A was. Can you see underneath here, you, I have A. If I put my third layer on here, 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 that means A, B, A. B. Is that clear? Yeah. So if I put here, this was C. So that is different, right? So from here to here, only way you can put. But from here, you have option whether to put where it was A or C. That's, that's the difference, how you pack this A, B or A, B, C. Yeah, so these are the two close pack planes. Yeah, yeah actually th this one explains more easier. Here, A. So actually this good. So this is B. So now see uh, where you put the whether you put. Uh, so now uh, A. That's B. Now let's see where I put the. If I want to put uh, uh, where in this case. So where did I put this one exactly? Where A was right. This is right on top of that A. That is A B A B structure. That's a. Uh, exactly. The hexagonal uh, the, the close back one, right? But if I put this one, actually this is much more clear. The C was here, right? This this is my previous C. It's not on top of this one. Now I'm going to put it here. The C space. If I put here, that this is exactly on top of that A. You can see underneath. You can see the red one, right? If you put on that one, that is again A. But if I put it here, that is C. So that's the, I think this picture is much clearer. You can see A, B. Now I am going to put not here. Because this is where A was. Now I am going to put here, C. So that's what. See, that's what A, B, C structure. This becomes 
close uh, cubic close pack or FCC. These two you have to really think a little bit. A B A B or A B C A B C. Okay. Yeah, here, here another picture. So this is H C P A B A B. This is A B C A B C. Actually, when you make these structures, actually this is next thing I'm going to show is from one of our own experiments here. So we saw this. Uh, uh, we were making this gallium. Uh, no, uh, no, I think these are uh, gallium oxide or something. I cannot exactly remember. So when we did this one, this is uh, high resolution TEM image. You can see we have uh, we call these as stacking folds because up to here you have cubic. Then there's some. Uh, this some kind of defect, so this becomes hexagonal. <laughs> so that stacking, the sequence has during the growth is has changed. You have cubic up to here, then you have hexagonal, then you see another cubic. So you can see the crystal structure is not the something called the single crystalline, right? So the, if you have this kind of uh, change in your crystal structure, remember we talk about the point defects line defects so this is another kind of these called the stacking folds the how the stacking arrangement can change right so whether it's a a b a b or a b c during the growth up to here it goes like cubic then the stacking uh, sequence changes it makes it hexagonal so during material growth sometimes we don't have control <laughs> it, uh, why that happens or yeah it's because of how uh, at, at, during the growth some there are the kinetics and all these other things right so they can influence how this uh, why it should make it this one or this one so it's uh, energetics right so how the uh, least energy configuration okay the last thing I will talk about the perovskites perovskites are also uh, cubic structure but in perovskites uh, uh, it can be cubic or it can be even rhombohedral but it still is a your ABC uh, can be equal or not equal one so but alpha beta gamma all are 90 degrees so in perovskites interesting thing is you have this is the most uh, common perovskite structure A, B, O3. So this A and B are two uh, uh, cations and this is the anion. That, this means this, these are positive, this uh, O becomes negative. So uh, this is the most common perovskite structure. But there are some variations. So if you look at this uh, methyl uh, ammonia halide but still they have this kind but you have methyl group and halide group and things like that but this is the most general formula for a perovskite so but still crystal structure is cubic so if you look at this one you can see I have this uh, uh, cations A and B so represented by uh, red and blue so then you have this anion uh, is mostly like oxygen so this is the unit cell if you consider this one uh, actually the location of your uh, A cation so I can consider this one so this is my A cation what's the uh, coordinate for this one this is at origin right zero so I can write that one as zero then the blue one blue one is exactly at the center that is half 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 right so that one exactly at the half then the, the oxygen ones they are at the surface of the each face so that means half half zero or if you put this one zero half half like that right these are the surfaces of these four things so how many uh, uh, Atoms for this unit cell are there. Can you count the number of 
atoms from corner once you get one right then from the middle one you get one so then you have half coming from six faces right half of six that means you have two plus three five atoms per unit cell so please remember most of the standard uh, ferroscites you have five atoms per unit cells for the conventional unit cell is that clear everyone yeah because this is also something everybody should have no also like i said most of the time people like to see this crystal structure in terms of the void space so you can see most of these places are voids right so sometimes it's easy to uh, understand by connecting the closest neighbors so that you can so you know how to calculate the closest neighbors right if you like typically if you take a simple cube how many nearest neighbors you have only six right <laughs> if you go to uh, bcc i think it has eight nearest neighbors if you go to fcc there are 12 nearest neighbors i think yeah just think about that yeah so actually in most of the cases you can be orthorhombic unit cell that means your a and b uh, are equal but c is different right that's the sorry orthorhombic means everything is different right a b c yeah so a b and c or a, but all the angles are 90 degrees okay so i'm going to go and finish this one so here are some of the uh, more common elements and they are uh, structures you can see not many actually there's only one very right, simple cube okay then last thing uh, this is what I was trying to talk about this uh, uh, polyhedra oh, oh this is uh, another very interesting one so you please uh, very uh, important slide this one probably the most important thing everything I talk is summarized here so you can see if I take simple cubic you have uh, coordination number that's the number of uh, uh, closest uh, that is points right six eight ten twelve that's what I said so if you take simple cubic remember it can have if you take this uh, red arrows I have one two three the red arrow says so this uh, can be made by uh, that interlacing right so by putting things together like if i take a uh, simple cubic if i uh, introduce like two atom bases you get see simple right so it's still it is simple cubic right so then uh, uh, if i uh, so then but if this C, uh, cesium chloride if it is in the same uh, element sorry uh, yeah so if they are different elements they become uh, BCC no sorry if it is same element it become BCC right if it is same element it's a simple cubic with two atom bases so then also if you take this uh, uh, structure and make it more metals into the system you can make it a perovskite structure so then the other side you can start with the FCC remember FCC if I have uh, interpenetrating structure then I can make a sodium chloride there are two FCC structures then uh, if they are uh, uh, also I can make it uh, zinc blend or diamond structure right this blue means uh, whether you can have same type of atoms or different atoms if I had the same atom I get the diamond structure if it is different I get the zinc plane structure same thing for the uh, HCP also the, the uh, what is the uh, yeah HCP or the uh, hexagonal structure if it is the same one we call uh, still the, but if they are different elements you get the uh, wood side structure this is a very nice please go through that one so it summarizes everything that i tried to okay so the last thing i want to talk about then we'll stop time
Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. Suppose if I want to calculate the density of copper, so that you know if I give you mass and volume, you know how to calculate the density, right? But if I only give you the, uh, the atomic radius of copper, how do you calculate the density? And also I will give you the atomic number of uh, or the atomic weight and the Avogadro number. So how do you calculate the density of copper? So what you do is simply take unit cell, right? So this has A, 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 but I don't give you A, I only give you R, radius of copper. But also I have to say copper is, what is the crystal structure for copper? FCC. Yeah, so copper, gold, silver, they all are FCC. So if I give this information, R also given, that's the radius of my copper atom, right? So how do you do this one? That's simple, right? If I take this unit cell, so I know the volume, right? But said, yeah, that's A cube, right? So then what is the, the density? The density is mass, say a mass divided by my volume, say V. So in this case, V is simply A cube. But A is not known, but I know how to get A from R. Remember, we calculated that was, I think, uh, A, R was A times we are from 2 over 2 or something like that. So well, let's get back to here. So then uh, how to calculate this M? To calculate M I need to know the uh, that's the how many uh, atoms are there, right? We know in the uh, uh, this one you have for the FCC how many atoms are there? Four atoms, right? For each atom has volume of uh, four third pi r cube, right? So then you have uh, the, the mass you can, uh, you know the volume. So then you need to know uh, uh, the how many atoms are here. To calculate that one, for the unit cell we know number of atoms is simply four, right? Yeah, so using that one you can easily calculate. So let, let's see how you calculate in terms of your, that's the approach. So if I take rho, rho is basically mass or volume. So now if I have, uh, I give my atomic weight, atomic mass, say that is W. So this is actually, we did that in the modern physics lab, right? 63.5, I think, for copper grams per mole. I say this is W. So that means uh, I can calculate the total number of atoms uh, in uh, this one. So suppose if I uh, take my mass, so what is the, if I take uh, mass W, that is the uh, atomic weight means how many atoms are there? Avogadro number of atoms, right? Avogadro number of atoms we have W in grams, right? So that means one atom will have mass of W over Na. So that is the uh, mass of one atom of uh, copper, right? Is that clear? So now if I take my unit cell, so I know the volume, right? This one. So then, but in this volume, how many atoms are there? Four atoms, right? Then, then I can write my uh, mass, mass as four times uh, uh, so uh, four times my atomic mass, right? So what is the atomic mass? Uh, four times, so uh, this is the mass one, 
W over N A, right? That is for one atom. So then, uh, that is the mass in grams, right? Is that clear? So then divide by my volume. Volume is given by A Q. But the A Q is not given. I have given you W, I have given you N A. Uh, so this is in grams. So A I can get from this relationship. Can you remember the relationship? It was for the face center cubic, yeah, yeah. This simple cubic. Face and this is the face center. Yeah. Your A is given by uh, 4R equals A square root of 2. So that means uh, R is given, right? So that means I get A as 4 over, so A equals 4R divided by square root of 2. So R is given. So then if I put it here, you can calculate rho. Actually, you, you can go through this calculation here. Yeah. So these are given. So radius R is given as 0.128. Uh, this is given atomic mass, that's FCC. You have to tell it is FCC, otherwise you don't know this four there, right? So then this is the uh, density, right? So number of atoms, that is four. Uh, this is the atomic weight A, that I use W here. This is A divided by the cell volume, that is A cube, right? Times uh, Avogadro number. So if you put these things together, A is on, yeah, this is two R over. Uh, square root of 2. Yeah. So if you do this one, you get the exact number 8.98 grams per cubic centimeter. So in atomic scale, you can calculate the density, right? But you need to know the unit cell uh, uh, volume and also you need to know what is the mass using the atomic mass. Is that clear for you? I gave one similar problem for the homework. Because the copper, interesting thing is. With temperature, you can have copper phase change from FCC to BCC. <laughs> so now, if I give BCC, what's the only difference? That yeah, that's the only difference. Right? Other than that, everything is the same. Yeah. Okay, I'll stop here. So I think that's all I have to talk about crystal structure. So next class, I will talk about the symmetry operations. So and some this space groups. Then we'll get back to something called the, so far we are talking about rigid solids, right? But we know these are not <laughs> rigid, so they always vibrate, right? That's non-zero temperature. What is that called? That's where we call the phonons. <laughs> when the atoms are vibrating means that can propagate heat, right? So that's how the heat propagation happens. That's what we are going to talk about next. Oh no, I, yeah. Uh, actually, we, before that, we need to talk about something called the special space called the reciprocal space. Yeah. After that, we'll talk about the lattice vibrations. Okay. Yeah. So, if you have any questions, I think next homework is very straightforward one. Very <laughs> easy. Yeah. Homework, please submit to the blackboard. Whatever you easy thing. If you want to give it to me, that's fine. No, just submit to the blackboard. That's uh, fine. Yeah. But to submit to blackboard, you have to make a PDF or something, right? What is whatever easy thing? I mean, we did that, but uh, yeah. also brought hard copy, whatever. Oh yeah, anything is fine for me. I just want you to work. That's all. <laughs> I don't care about how. But I like to see if you made any big mistake. I will uh, talk to you about that. But I'm not going to take points off or anything. Just to uh, to the blackboard. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. You have to give it to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, homework is basically to understand the concept. I think actually I was thinking this last week. I was thinking maybe I won't even give exams. Maybe homework <laughs> would be good enough. Yeah. I give exam means same thing like a homework, right? <laughs> yeah. So we'll stick with the homework. So work on the homework seriously. Do you need to post like uh, solutions for the homeworks? Yeah, I can do that, yeah. Thank you. Yeah.
then you know what mistakes yeah. you leave, right? Yeah. 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 Thank you. So whenever you have time, you oh yeah, ten a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So ten a.m. tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'm gonna take the weekend maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Maybe Sunday or something. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything after? Uh, I'm sure you do. Uh, do you know how much time we could have at ten a.m.? Maybe thirty minutes. Which one? Uh, tomorrow at ten a.m. No, I, I said like uh, even a Sunday is funny for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Yes, I'm not going to grade this weekend. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm talking about a meeting with you. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Yeah. So tomorrow, let's see. We said 10, 10 o'clock is good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to give that one. So, yeah. Okay. This is not bad, right? It doesn't take that much time. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to do, otherwise, you don't learn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hello, Sati. 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 Hello,